Yo, 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 what's up? Back for another episode of Victory Lap Media. We do not have a guest this week, so it'll be us three again. We are going to talk everything sports that's going on this week. How are we doing tonight, boys? Fantastic. Can't complain. So we're going to get right into baseball. Um, I got to be honest, I, did, I had zero thought that baseball was going to happen. And they announced – now you want to get into it more. It's what, 60 games? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's going to be a 60-game season, and they're going to play it in the span of 66 days. So not going to be too many rest days, but it is a shortened season, so that was kind of their figuring for less off days. Um, they are going to have the universal DH, so like the National League will have a designated hitter as well. And then the way that the scheduling is going to work is that – so, like, just using the Cubs, for example, they're going to play each team in the NL Central 10 times each. So, Reds, Pirates, Cardinals, Brewers. So, that will be 40 games of their season. And then they're going to play each team in the AL Central. So, like, same, like, regional division, but on the AL side. They'll play each of those five teams – four games each. So I'll be the other 20. So they play, they play no other NL teams other than the one. Just to, just to kind of like limit on travel and stuff. And right. Wait, so is it, but is it, uh, is it geographical or by division? Because with the Astros, they don't fit into that pie. It's not, I mean, it's kind of geographical, but obviously like some divisions have like an outlier team. Yeah. And then, like, some people were talking about, like, oh, what about, like, the Blue Jays? Is Canada going to be okay with, like, athletes yeah. and stuff? Well, they said, they're, they said they're going to because the NHL, there's right. they have six hub cities, and three of them are Canadian. Exactly. So I think, like, Canada is, like, signed off as long as they follow every single guideline possible. But um, I think it's going to be fucking awesome i'm so happy i hate baseball 162 game season like i think it's so stupid i did see something though that was like super interesting it was like the standings after 60 games last year and like the texas rangers would have made the playoffs the nationals were like 15 games out of the playoffs like it was the cubs were winning the nl central um the indians i think were winning the al central like it was it was completely different by the end of the year but also i mean I think teams go into 162 games knowing they have 162 games. Like, now it's going to be full force. I mean, they're going to go after it. So, it'll be awesome, though, because the first 20 games, 15 games, will feel like playoff games. And then I'll probably cool off a little bit, but still be, like, high-level baseball. And then, like, the last 20 games will be, like, playoff baseball again. Um, It'll be interesting to see if, like, any team just straight from the start is like, fuck it, let's tank. Like, what do we care? Like, if the Mariners or someone – like, the Mariners started, like, 14-0. and 0. If you just go 500 the rest of the year, you're in the playoffs. And yeah. it, I think it's going to be awesome, though, because just baseball is so fucking long of a season. And mm-hmm. I don't like baseball that much to do that. But now is going to be just – like, they were saying that pitchers are going to go for it all. So, like, there's going to be low-scoring baseball games. Bring back steroids, honestly. That'd be yeah. – this season crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we'll be, think about the 60 game season like if, if like a team of five starting pitchers that's only 12 games each to start so like oh, the fifth, draft, so the fifth pitcher will not get 12 starts no chance they'll, they'll, they'll get it'll be one two three four we'll each probably get 15 and then the fifth will come in when it like like uh, let's say the Cubs, like their fifth pitcher will probably get six to ten. Yeah, I guess they could always use the fifth spot as like like some of their bench guys too, like putting on relief pitchers to take care of fifth days. 100%. Because there's not as many off days, like I said. No, there's not. But you also haven't been pitching this whole time. Like you have been, but not like game right. pitching. On 110 they, pitches. They're not going to be in shape day one, opening day, July 27th, I think. I think they'll be in shape, but I don't think that they'll be – like, they're not going to get exhausted. Like, normally they pitch – I mean, how many games is a, an ace normally throw in a season? 
uh, about 30, like say anywhere between 25 and 30 games. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're looking at a third of that. So yeah. I think they'll be, I think they'll be ready to go. It'll be cool. I hope like the angels can make the playoffs now, just short season, just hit bombs all the time. So Joe Madden can screw all the Cubs fans. No, not a chance. David okay. Ross. Who do you guys think it benefits and who do you think it hurts? I think it benefits like teams that have recently been in the playoffs, I guess. I think they're going to be ready to go, like rolling off their last season. Like, I think it benefits a team like the Cubs, honestly. I think it benefits a team like the Angels, who like, if you can squeeze wins out by hitting the shit out of the ball and just get like one or two good games from a bunch of different pitchers. Um, but also, are like, does everyone just forgets about the Astros now? Like, I think that's like a wild story that like they just cheated to win a championship and now this all happens and then like everyone's just like, yeah, all right. Like the Yankees. Well, yeah, the Yankees too. Yeah. Right. The top, the top three teams in the sports books right now to win this year's World Series is Dodgers one, Yankees two, Astros three. Yeah, but I was talking about the Yankees cheating. Oh, my bad. Cheating too, and they just get like no one's really talking. Yeah. It was up for like a day. Baseball, baseball always gets knocked. Like everyone's everyone's cheating, and like like just fucking. I just wish it was uh like just either let them do it or so like I don't know it, this shit. Like the, no. the teams, I guarantee the Dodgers are probably doing that shit too. And, like, this is baseball. my problem. This is my problem. Is all the baseball writers and all these elitists. Hammer, Bonds, Sosa, McGuire, all these guys for using steroids because it was cheating, which, yeah, gave you an advantage. But then all these teams are coming out and they're spying on pitches knowing – I mean, imagine Barry Bonds knew every pitch was coming. He'd have, like, 2,000 home runs. So, like – and then, like, none of the – all these teams are getting off easy. The Astros, like, nothing happens to them. Like, how – I just think, like, it's such a double standard and it's, like, not – they don't – they're not across the board with it. And like you said, Andrew, I think everyone does it. So I think these writers know it and they're like, oh, it'll ruin baseball. So we can't say anything. And it's like, dude. Yeah. They, they figure out a way to um, like kind of have the mob. It was impossible to catch the people, like yeah. the most important people. So like the fucking GMs take a hit. And like, I mean, yeah, GMs are important, but. Obviously not nearly as a, like as integral as a uh, as the starting nine are. So they, them getting off easy is just a fucking joke. Like hope, hopefully the it sucks. Yeah. That, it sucks that fans aren't going to be there, so they can't like harass the shit out of the Astros. You know, <laughs> like There's no fans the whole time. They said that they'll re like I think regular season is like no doubt no fans, and then if like. Everything goes smoothly, and obviously by that time, football will be happening with some fans if it works out for every other sport, that fans will be allowed to go to the playoffs maybe. Mm-hmm. So I just – it would be awesome if – because the thing is, is like people are probably going to forget about next year, and just like the Yankees, people are going to fucking forget. Like everyone's going to forget about all this shit. Um, Did – have the Astros, like, officially received their punishment yet? Like, is it all said and done already? Yeah, the, like, them and the Red Sox, they, yeah. like, lost some of their picks in this recent draft. Yeah, they lost draft picks. Yeah, and they, like, a $5 million fine. I, I didn't know if it was going to be anything Yeah, more. and when the manager got fired, they had to pay a fine. Yeah, like, that affects them. Right. right. Like, yeah, exactly. Even well, if you like, man, like, the owners are crying this year. It doesn't mean shit in baseball. Like, you can, you can yeah, like, it, yeah. The teams that that are constantly – like, they figured it out. Like, they've been at the top for, like, five years now. Like, if they understand how to replenish a farm system and missing two draft picks, yes, it, it'll hurt, but it's not going to be the end of the world for a powerhouse like that. So, oh, Jerry Carabas said he was just like, dude, I – from what I've heard, it's – if you're in the playoffs, you've done it. Like, you've cheated. So, it's like <laughs> – like, it's That's like, so – it's so stupid. Like, either bring it all down, and then we have like a Mariners Athletics World Series. You're like, yeah. that's 
it's just like, yeah, it's, it's like the, it's like impossible to obviously tell, not, not impossible, but it's, it's very hard for a fan to notice it. So it's like, we are not in the loop at all. And then it's just like, they're all like, that is the most like game altering cheat you can have knowing what pitch is going to be coming to a very high percentage. If people want to complain about steroids, they know what pitch is coming. You know how easy that is? Yeah, the people that were saying it's not that big of a deal is just like, you guys are it's all. Totally big. It's like in football, if you know not just the play, where Tom Brady's actually throwing it. Not, right. play. not just knowing run or pass, but knowing like what direction it's coming. That's what yeah. it equates to in football, like something like, like that. Like, oh, we hot routed to uh, – this year, Mike Evans. So we're going to him no matter what happens. Like, that's what that is. And it's insane how it's just like, who knows? I'm just happy the baseball, I guess, is back. Hopefully it actually happens. They said July, what, first people will start reporting? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's their spring training. They have spring training for like three and a half weeks. And then, and then the 24th. What's up? Uh, is it, is, it's either the 24th or the 27th, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's kind of cool that uh, each team gets to have a hub city that's within whatever miles radius, and it's 30 players that just practice all the time. If someone gets hurt, they can get called up. Right. And then there was, like, also news about, like, having, like, 60 guys on your roster for the season. Uh, huh? Like, they're, they're talking about, like, having, like, some form of, like, minor league system going like in a couple of different cities like for training purposes more like than they don't yeah it's the 30 because they're split they get 30 guys on the team and 30 guys in this hub city so that'd be six right. yep. yeah all right any any other words on that Fuck baseball. i think let's get into this one because i was let's get into colin coward's Top college football programs. Alita, do you want to run the? Yeah, so it's like a first 30 seconds of this to give you a little context on what the list is all about. I think, you know, people know I like college football, right? I, I'm more of an NFL guy than a college guy because I think the college game's gotten kind of regional. Um, but Alabama and Ohio State um, announced last week late they were going to play. And this is really important. Because in terms of, let's just talk about teams that can win the national championship. There's really only two tiers in college football. And I leave out a lot of really good programs. Wisconsin, Washington, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, Nebraska, Iowa. I think 2020 going on, they're not national championship pro programs. There's four programs in America that are just different. Bama, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and SC, and let me explain. Forget the fact that all have won national titles with three different head coaches. But if every college football program in America had their best coach ever, these four would dominate the sport. It doesn't matter who coaches LSU and Georgia. If Alabama's got Saban, they dominate the conference. It does. Okay. Okay. This is so idiotic. <laughs> okay. So based on if every so, if, but if Notre Dame has like Lou Holtz, then are they back in it? Don't not even Lou Holtz. If they have like error precision, has the best winning percentage ever yeah, in college football. Yeah. Like I guess yeah. It's, I was thinking someone worries. And then if you, if you want to put that way, you're telling me that if Clemson does Dabo, they're not dominating the sport. Like he just brought up Nick Saban. Clemson's like a one B in the past ten years on this. I mean, and then you're. Are, but you gotta admit though, with Clemson, they they definitely seem they they play like it too, like are much more beatable throughout the entire season than Alabama ever. hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, at the end of the day, they're still getting to the national championship year in and year out other than a couple of times. I mean, if you want to go by Jimmy Johnson with Miami in the eighties, they dominate, like you could throw them in. If you want to say dominated eras. I mean, at what point, I mean, I guess Oklahoma, very Switzer, you, I don't think those teams ever really dominated though. Like in Ohio state, it's not like they've won a shitload of titles. Yeah, I mean they're they're constantly the. I mean, for like the, out of the past fifteen, probably like ten of the years, they've been the best team in the Big Ten. But yeah, but they've won one title. Title from it. I mean, it was still a hell of a title, but still, I mean, sure. But then like he, but then also at the beginning of what he said, he said that 
2020 moving on. He said that's why he won't include Wisconsin and Iowa's because it's 2020 moving on. How in the hell are you going to put Oklahoma and USC in 2020 moving on? Oklahoma has net other than one game has been outscored by like an average of 35 points in every playoff game they've ever been in. They're not even close to the Alabama's Ohio state's Georgia's like, but like I said, the one year they got beat in double overtime or overtime. But other than that, they got murdered by Clemson, murdered by Bama, murdered by LSU. I mean, it, it's <laughs> idiotic to think that. And then USC, they just went seven and fucking five. You, I mean, when, when Notre Dame hasn't lost to USC in how many times now, it's like that's when you know they're on the fucking and When downturn. we were growing up, they couldn't beat USC. Yeah, they could not beat them. Now they're going on the road every fucking time and winning. And how, like, so how do you want to put you at, in this whole like, well, I won't include Wisconsin because it's 2020 moving on. How are you going to be like, okay, but I'm going to include Oklahoma because I can go back and put Barry Switzer as their coach. That doesn't make it. You can't do that. Yeah. Not, you don't just, and so my thing is, is like tier two, he says he doesn't include a lot of teams. He still has 12 teams on his tier two. Yeah. So who are those teams? Can you see them? Clemson, yeah. Clemson, Florida State, Miami, Auburn, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Michigan, Penn State, Texas, Oregon, Notre Dame. First off, Michigan does not be, deserve to be on that list at all. Secondly, I mean, like it would take Ohio State to like have a death penalty, like where they lose all scholarships for like five years for Michigan right. to take, take over. Like Ohio State is such a more dom- like they're just they've what, they've lost once in the past twelve, right, or fourteen or something. Yeah, I think it's once in the past twelve, honestly. But okay, also, We're- why are we putting right now Florida State and Miami? They've been horrendous the past like Miami had that one year but they also lost three games and got beat the shit out of in the orange Bowl. other than that they haven't been good since fucking they lost the the national championship to Ohio State in 2000s Miami or Florida State ever since Jimbo won the title for them they haven't really been that good either the next year they got blown out against Oregon in the playoffs then after that they've been average as shit I mean now they have a new coach so it's like eh. I mean, are you? Who knows? Clemson, they like they would be the team if he's going off of like moving twenty twenty and forward. Like, I think you have to put him in tier one. I mean, they're the literally the second most. Yeah, well, I mean, is, there hasn't been a single sign of Clemson slowing down. Like, you're just putting them down a notch with no with no like evidence at all. They're right. like recruiting better now than they were five years ago. Yeah, I mean, they they are on that tier with Alabama on recruiting now. Like, I agree. Yeah. Now, if you want to go 2020 movie forward, I agree that Alabama and Ohio State are tier one. Alabama, I mean, no doubt. Like, how can you argue with that? Ohio State, like, they always have a hiccup, but it's like they did win the title. Last year, like, I think they would have given LSU a better game than Clemson did. I really do. They had, I mean, their talent in the first round that was drafted was just absurd. Mm-hmm. But they played no, nose and nose with Clemson. They're probably going to be back in the playoffs next year, so I'm good with them. I would move Clemson up. But the next three are Auburn, Florida, and Georgia. I'm okay with all three of those being in Tier 2 because I think all th- – like, Georgia's proven that they can win. Uh, the other- How did Georgia not get in last year again? What was the scenario that happened? Well, they would have had to uh, beat LSU. Oh, oh, oh they, yeah, that's right. That's right. They, they lost to uh, South Carolina. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Wow. So, I if they would have somehow went undefeated, they probably would have stuck in still. So, then, if they would have beat South Carolina, they would have been in the SEC championship then? No, no, no. They would have been in the playoffs, I'm saying, because they would have been undefeated in the SEC championship game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, then we are winning that game, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Auburn, Florida. Auburn's won, what, a title lost in one last 10 years or 12, 15 years. I, I don't know. I, I think Auburn, like Gus Malzahn, needs to do – but Tier 2 is fine. Like, I wouldn't put them in a Tier 3. LSU, I mean, for how dominant they were last year, I think – Clemson's – Oh, shit, sorry. Yeah, they – I mean, Auburn and uh, Florida are, like, they're, they're always – if they win a 
a couple games, like they're a game away from going to the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, the one year, the one year Auburn lost to like Clemson, Bama, and someone at Georgia. Yeah, but all right. three were in the playoffs. And if, and if they just would have won the SEC championship game or whatever, then they yeah. would have been in yeah. the play, like a th- three loss team in the playoff or whatever. Or two yeah, so that, they would have been two losses. So they would have beat yeah. uh, Georgia, but like still, like they were, they went nine and or ten and three, I think, with all yeah. three losses being the three playoff teams. It's just yeah, that was an absurd schedule. But at the same time, with with that point to Auburn, like though they have a much tougher schedule than. Notre Dame year in and year out, even though like Notre Dame tries to schedule hard, but yeah, but doesn't pan, pan out. Notre Dame is typically a loss or two, like a loss away. Like if they yeah. went one of the two losses out, like last three years or thirty three and six, you cut out one of those losses. They're in majority of the years too. Yeah. I mean, if Notre Dame goes on the road, beats Michigan, they actually yeah. had an argument last year to get in right. Oklahoma. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, Texas, dude, they haven't been relevant since they lost the championship game to. Uh, Alabama. I mean, and let's be real. They they have not been. They fucking what? They beat Georgia in a at Sugar Bowl where they go. Where Georgia Georgia gets scummed out of the playoff and doesn't show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Eleven and two. It's like, dude, you. Then they come back the next year and they go seven and five. Get out of here. They're not tier. I don't, I would not put Texas tier two. Uh, history, yeah, but I'm going based off of what he said. Right. 2020 moving forward and right now I don't think you can put Texas or Miami in the tier two I would argue you could make a slight argument with Michigan and you give Harbaugh one more year but in reality I would put Texas Michigan Miami and honestly Florida State in a tier three what about Oregon uh who is who is gonna win the Pac-12 like is it, it's yeah. USC or Oregon? It's not even what? USC. I mean, it's been Utah or Oregon, really. Yeah, or Washington. Washington yeah. in the past few years have been pretty good. It really is twenty twenty going forward. Like Oregon's definitely like the same position as like Oklahoma in the Big Twelve. Like kind yeah. of like the power seat of the yeah. Division. They're clearly the best team, so it's like theirs to lose. So, right. in my opinion, I mean, you could argue if I mean USC could. Like, it's for the – I think the seat is up for the taking, though. Like, it's not really oh, – it's or, not like – or it's not like – I think Oklahoma is definitely better than every team no, in the Big they, 12. They have the fucking throne right now. I think Oregon does, but, like, I don't think it – like, I don't think anyone would be shocked if they didn't win the Pac-12. You know what I mean? Like, they what – the, how what they do last year? What was their – They lost to Arizona State and uh, yeah. Auburn. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then they won the Pac-12 championship and then beat Wisconsin yeah. in the Rose Bowl. And they lost to Auburn week one yeah. on the road, I think. Or was it a neutral? Oh, yeah, that was crazy. They actually did last year. I forgot about that. Yeah, they lost on that last second touchdown to Auburn, and then Arizona State yeah. beat them. Then they beat Utah in the Pac-12 championship and beat they Wisconsin. They shit on Utah, too, right? Yeah. It was, it was like – well, they, they were heavy under – not heavy underdogs, but they were underdogs, and they won by, like, 14. I think they, they ended up winning by double digits, like 14 points. Yeah. So, Penn State – I mean, they have won, like – a. Penn State's in there. Okay, yeah. They've won a New Year's Six Bowl, like, five out of the last six years. I just, Like, so I think Tier 2 is fine because, like, they're winning 11 games almost every year. Yeah. But they're not – like, let's be real, they're not that even close to Tier 1. But I think they're above Tier 3. But I would move Florida State, Miami, Michigan, and Texas all to Tier 3. I, I think Tier 2 is almost – is there anyone I would put up, though? Like, not there. I mean, USC clearly is not a fucking Tier 1. That is just absurd to think. That would yeah. be an interesting one. Like, what teams that aren't in Tier 2, like, do we think could replace those teams? Yeah, who's not on this list. For like, sure. Maybe Washington, but probably not. But they just lost Peterson. I mean, they're probably going downhill. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, um, who's the other SEC teams? That's what I'm trying to think. Because you got – I mean, you got really all of them. Auburn, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Alabama. Uh, the Big 12. I mean, mm-hmm. it's Purdue. Got to throw Purdue yeah. in there. Purdue, IU could probably be tier three. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, but who the f- I, there's? I feel like there's a. I think if it's 2020 going forward, like 
Oh, like seeing out what Minnesota was able to like oh, produce no. their. Can you go eight? No, I'm not saying they should deserve. Four, I'm saying if there, was, if there was another Big Ten team, like that would move up, like yeah. 2020 going forward. Like if they do that again this year, beat Wisconsin. If they right. can beat Wisconsin, which they haven't been able to yeah. do ever, they're going to go seven and five this year, and they're going to take a step back, and everyone's going to get off the fucking. PJ Fleck train because he's. A that big was just the only. That was the only Big Ten team I would say like would have any kind of. I would say oh, Wisconsin over them. Wisconsin's Wisconsin. Well, we were, my, yeah, we were talking about Wisconsin. Who were the uh, Wisconsin beat Miami in the Orange Bowl? Won the Rose so Bowl. Maybe. So Utah maybe. Yeah, but they can never win a bowl game. Like they just got their ass beat by Texas after going ten and two or eleven and one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to pick any team that's not listed to be above any of the teams we're trying to move. He said, he, he said Virginia Tech, who he left out, someone else, Virginia Tech. Who? Colin Cowher said Virginia yeah. Tech? But he was saying I left out a lot of good teams like Virginia oh, Tech. Oh, an ass. I think he said that's Georgia cool. Tech, too. I don't know, though. I can't remember. <laughs> that's Georgia Tech. I, I mean, like one more SEC team that we're kind of missing, but not really. Like, when you think of, like, who – those two east teams and the two west teams, like, and then Alabama. Three west and two east, yeah. Texas A&M always has one of the best recruiting classes, like, every single yeah, year. Yeah, like, they can't. And it's then they just fucking... don't do shit. So, I would say, like, Texas A&M is, Fuck like, close to them. coaches them. Right. Missouri. Missouri, yeah. <laughs> they went to the SEC championship that one year. Oh, Tennessee just came off a title, though. Tennessee did win a title, Coach Duggs and the boys. Yeah. So you put Toledo in Tier 2? They just 50 burger Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they did. They play Tennessee tonight, so I guess we'll see if they're big boys. Yeah. I think if Toledo wins the championship this year, they do go to Tier 2. Yeah. All right. That, that's – we bitched about a list. Sports are back. Um, that list was solely created to get people bitching and talking about <laughs> Yeah, 100%. No one thinks that's the list, dude. All how, right. How could Clemson possibly be two? Like, on no, no logic could that make sense. And the problem with what his logic was, was he said 2020 moving forward. If he would have just said all time, I'm going to take, if you drop one of their yeah. three, best, three best coaches, but never said 2020 moving forward, and that's why I'm leaving out Iowa. And, cause, but the problem is, is like, if you go all time, you got to throw in like, I think Nagy, you said it, Nebraska. I mean, all time, they're one of the greatest college football programs ever. So, I mean, Michigan is up there with. Yeah. Notre I mean, the Dame. top, I think the top five wins are like USC, Nebraska, Michigan, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma, maybe. So, like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I just think his whole thing was like 2020 moving forward, but it's like, dude. Like, L, like Clemson arguably might be the number one, if not number two. Like, yeah. So it's like, Exactly that's what I'm saying. All right, moving on. Jamal Adams requests a trade. He said that Adam Gase, the head coach, was a major factor in why he is requesting a trade. Uh, rookie contract requesting a trade. Where did he go to school? I don't even – I didn't even LSU. look. LSU. He's two-time Pro Bowler in three years. He's actually a stud. But – I don't know. Like, he I – mean, he, he could just be like, I, like the Jets fucking blow. Like, get me out of here. But, I mean, the NFL is just not – like, when's the last time a rookie contract got traded? I, don't, I couldn't even tell you. When they requested it, too. Not like – Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Where it's like, okay, hey, we want this value for this guy. Like, take him. Uh, fuck, I mean, Eli Manning on draft day. Like, maybe so, he's like – Past, like past a season or two, has it happened? Like, past a season, that would be interesting to see. I don't know, like, because like everyone else, like Le'Veon Bell, who requested a trade, he wasn't on his rookie contract. He was on a second right. contract. Um, uh, imagine, imagine the, uh, like the floodgates this could open if he gets what ends up gets getting what he wants, and now all rookies, like after a season with the shitty team that you draft by, like I have on a trade off. Yeah, like imagine next year if the Bengals still suck, Burrow's like I'm out, dog. Say, yeah, Burrow, who, uh, like, just all these quarterbacks that go to shitty fu- – not qu- – quarterbacks are a little different, though. Like, they're getting a little bit bigger of a bag probably than – Yeah, well, for sure. How I, have, how I have a draft pick was uh, Jamal Adams. Top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
But so in reality, I think what they're saying is, is like he's wanted to go to the Cowboys for two years. If I think if he gets traded to like the Texans or like someone who's like kind of on his list, but in reality, we know he just said it because he's hoping he can just get out. Then it's kind of like, okay, maybe they – and they get a return on it, then it's like, okay, maybe not. But if he goes to the tech, uh, the Cowboys, it's like, fuck, man. I think you'll see more – to your point, I think you'll see more people do it. Like, if he – because he's come out and said multiple times, like, Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. There's videos of, like, people are like, come to Dallas, Jamal. And he's like, I'm trying. Yeah. That's where I want to go. Yeah. So, like, if he goes able to go to Dallas, it's like, dude, now we're opening floodgates. And these guys are just like – it's going to turn in the NBA. Like, I want to get the fuck out of here. I mean, Anthony Davis with the late – like, It'll turn his sh- – not as much, I don't think. But, like, you'll see guys who, like you said, who go to shit teams. Because, like, the entire time he's been on the Jets, the Jets have been awful. So, right. and, like, Khalil Mack, he requested a trade, but he didn't request it to the Bears. He said he'll go anywhere, just not yeah. the Raiders. So, like, if he gets where he wants to go, that'll be interesting. And then the funny – like, yeah. So, the funniest part is, like, the teams he listed were, like, all – playoff teams last year and then he just added the uh cowboys exactly, <laughs> just like, exactly. and like, he, had a list, he had a list last year i think the list this year was eight teams his list last year was like six teams he just had two other playoff teams it's like yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay sick we were that could definitely like be like him trying to be on a team that's going to be on tv a lot more like prime time games too like before his rookie contract runs out so, like, he can grow his value and stuff. No, bro. The NFL, fuck no. The, they know everything, no matter what. I know, I know but, like, but, like, with the fans, like, everyone wants this guy, like, and they're begging, like, their owner and, like, GM to, like, get him specifically. I don't think that'll matter. No fucking – dude, no GM's listening to a bunch of fucking fans telling them to get some safety. What, here's here's uh, my question. You know, additional <laughs> reason. Because you really don't see the request – to move on a rookie contract like it's pretty rare because they don't have power that's the do you think it's a good or bad thing that rookie co- like rookie contract nfl players then have power i can see that being a little annoying like to where it's like okay are you gonna like these teams are getting the draft picks for a reason like we're trying to balance the league out and you're just trying to go to the good team 100 percent, a terrible thing yeah it's the like, yeah. worst thing if they start to get power like this but you'll see you'll start to see like I, Jerry Jones, I feel like if someone came out and did this, he would just be like, dude, I'm tra- like, I'm trading you the Redskins. I'm not trading you the fucking – Yeah, just like, send like another dog shit team yeah. like, to, to prove a point. Yeah, so like – so I think some owners – I think the Jets are just so incompetent incom- right now that like if the Cowboys gave him a big enough offer, even though it just pleases the shit of Jamal Adams, like they might take it and they'd be like, what are you doing? But to your point, Nagy, like, dude, they're – they have so much shit. This is not – that's not what he wants to do. He wants to play for a winning football team. Doesn't well, have, yeah, of course. It doesn't have anything to do with TV. This guy's going to get paid out of his mind if he plays for the Redskins or if he plays for the fucking Patriots. He's going to get paid. It's like the second best safety in football. Um, it'd be dope if the Steelers would somehow get him. They'd have fucking the best two safeties in football. Paul Malu and him, yeah. That'd be yeah, Paul Malu and uh, what, Joey Porter. <laughs> yeah, Joey Porter. Uh, so also, Avery Bradley's sitting out. We saw David Bertans is sitting out. Avery Bradley plays for the Lakers. David Bertans plays for the Wizards. I saw a lot of people giving David Bertans shit. I, th- I think it's so like his team has like almost zero chance of making the playoffs, and he's. He's had two season-ending knee injuries the past two years, and he's on his contract's up after this year. If I'm him, I'm just like, yeah, I get that. Like, why even risk an injury? Like, what if you go blow out your knee again and then you get paid way underpaid? Avery Bradley, they said from the start that he probably wasn't going to go. They said that they would be shocked if he did. Why? I guess – he was one of the biggest people with the Kyrie Irving Zoom meeting speaking out about social in, social injustice and saying that he doesn't think it's right to play right now. And so after that meeting, supposedly people around the Lakers felt that they didn't think he would come back and play. So interesting. I kind of like it because that means the Lakers are probably going to sign J.R. Smith. I saw that too, yeah. Awesome. 
LeBron's going to have nightmares. No. Of well, the, problem, the, the problem with it, though, is, like, Avery Bradley, he's such a damn good defender. And, like, J.R. Smith is just drunk all the time. So, like. Dude. Oh. I just, like, what if we could somehow, like, get a simulation – or, uh, like, a simulator of what would have happened if he just either goes back up with that rebound real quick or – Get or LeBron gets a shot. Like, yeah. Does he LeBron? Does LeBron hit it? Or even if LeBron misses it, do they still have the confidence in overtime and aren't just completely defeated? Like, there's so many different things that. Now, if they steal that game, it is. I mean, obviously, who the fuck knows? But that's oh, just like Warriors are on their heels. Yeah, they're on their heels that entire time. But that we saw what happened in 2015 when they stole Game One, or maybe it was Game Two. I forget, but they stole one on the road. Yeah. Went up two to one. Yeah, that that would have been uh, – uh, yeah, fucking J.R. Smith. But what if he hits a game winner in, like, the finals this time? Around? <laughs> yeah, just redeems it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that would be – do you think LeBron's even passing him the rock if he's wise the fuck no, up? No. He's just, not – Just in case he thinks it's tied, he just holds it. <laughs> He passes him at the rock. He dribbles it back up. He's like, we won, LeBron. <laughs> yeah. He just starts, like, dribbling. Let's go. He throws the ball in the air. They get a shot clock. Yeah. That would be so funny. Dude, that, that fucking meme when LeBron's just like, what? Oh, boy, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. All right. Time. I have a question. Do you guys think that baseball or uh, basketball this year? You hear that? Yeah. Baseball or basketball, whoever wins, do you think there is going to be an asterisk next to it? I think there Baseball, will. Baseball, there has to be, right? I mean, it's a 60-game season. But that's NBA. almost harder. Yeah, that's true. It's almost oh. harder. Yeah. I'd probably put – if I like, if you had to pick one, or are we saying no, – like, like, do you think either deserves one? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I thought you said would like the consensus have one. Um, no, 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 no. We, my bad. If either, do, do you think either deserves one? Deserves one. Okay. I think the NBA would be no. I mean, they they're going to be playing pretty much the whole season anyway. Like right, and they've already played like a decent amount of games before. And I think it's hard. Well, you don't get well, home okay. They're playing like almost the entire season. Like, yeah. How many games are they missing? Like ten. They had like twelve games left. They're playing an eight-game regular season, so they're going to not play, like, four of the games. That yeah, there's, there's, there should be no asterisks there. I Also, <laughs> Carver just tweeted at us, where my hoodie at? You said 40. I'll pay 50. <laughs> you just called me. Um, so, I, I think – but you also don't get, like, home court advantage at all. So, I think that's even tougher. Like, like you know, like uh, the Cavs – when LeBron was with them, like they needed home court advantage that LeBron's last year to basically win two of their three series in the Eastern conference. It's like, you don't get that. I, I think, I don't think either. I agree with you. I don't think either. And I know people are, because my point is, is like, do you think if LeBron wins this, people are like, well, it's kind of his third and a half, not his fourth. Or like, get, yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying with that. Like, but that would be, I feel like that would just be bullshit for, from an NBA perspective. Like, like what could it, from a, uh, devil's advocate what would they even say though about like why there's an asterisk well it's Just, not like it's not like any big name it's not like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are sitting out so LeBron had an easy way to the finals yeah like if that happens okay you could start talking yeah, asterisks yeah, yeah. we start to see like big time players sit out like every yeah, every, every team's taken advantage of the pros of this pandemic which is resting their uh, key players who may have been a little bit banged 100%. up. Anybody getting rested up is huge. So I mean, LeBron getting rested up is – I mean, all these guys, you know. So, I, yeah, in baseball, like, I get what you're saying. There could be one. But, like, I think it might be harder because you have to – like, you have to be very, very strategical in what you do. De definitely. But the, the reason I could see it being, like, there's an asterisk to it is because when, – so when you're building a roster for – to win a World Series, it's definitely, I think at least, maybe you guys have different opinions. Rosters are built much differently when there's a 162 season game or season in mind versus just a 60. Like maybe you don't go after as much depth in position X to like give yourself better play, like positions, a little bit more depth or whatever. But. 
A hundred percent. And like to your point of that, uh, I mean, the Nationals, if we're going 60 games, wouldn't have made the playoffs when they won the World Series. So like, I get what you're saying. But then again, I think the first 60 games will be taken so seriously that like we'll be seeing such high level baseball. Yeah, which will be awesome. Exactly. So I just I, my problem is, is like like if Kershaw gets his first ring, I don't want to hear, oh, it was like an Astro. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah, this this will be when Kershaw and the boys win it. Like after- the, only, the only way I see, like, an Asterix being able to be brought up is if, like, the one done. of the teams is missing, like, two or three of its best players, be, like, during the final series, like the World Series or the NBA Finals, like, due to COVID. Like, that's, like, about the only Okay, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say injury. I was going to be like, no. Yeah, you were going to say injury. I was like, I don't know. Exactly. No, no, like, because their COVID like, is, like, like, they tested positive. They tested positive for coronavirus, and they had to sit down. Okay, I could I could, right. I could, give that to you. That's yeah. a, here's the question. Do you think if that actually happened, those guys would be like, fuck, like, they'd, like, throw away the test and be like, ah, oh, he, he's yeah. out. Yeah. Take, take, take their teammates test that was negative. Um. I, okay, I agree with you on that one, Nagy. That would definitely be like the one outlier. Yeah, know? that's like the only one, only way I could think. Well, other than that, like, yeah, and let, but unless we see, like, we there's only been like three players sit out. It was like Avery Bradley, Trevor Ariza, whose Trailblazers aren't going to make the playoffs. David Bertans, whose Wizards aren't going to make the playoffs. Um, like, so there's only two guys. It's only one guy, and it's on LeBron's team. In reality. Right. And they're going to get – like, there's so many free agents that are solid that you can sign. So, like – That's fair. I don't think that there's an asterisk next to it. I don't think there should be. So – Right. In general, no. I, I agree. There's that, an no. asterisk next to the World Series title from the Astros? Absolutely. 100%. That's why I don't think it's fair to asterisk either of these championships because that would be like saying, oh, it's just like – Yeah, true, true. Like, I, I would – the, that's the thing. Like, are there different levels to asterisks? You know, like asterisk anything yeah. that's not involving cheating, you have to like double asterisk the asterisk. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because you can. You're right. You cannot lump in an aster an Astros asterisk with a COVID. T- right. Exactly. I 100 percent agree. What about what about the NHL then? No, that's tougher. You have to play more games to win it all. Yeah. I think it's tougher. That's gonna be intense, man. NHL Dude, playoffs are gonna be so fire. Like, yeah. NHL playoffs are some of the coolest things ever. And, like, it's still obviously, like, the fourth sport if we're going off major sports. But yeah. I think you'll start to see more people watch it in the back. Dan, NHL is kind of sick. Like, playoff yeah. hockey is so fun to watch. I but agree. Hockey, hockey is something different, yeah. That's just hockey, so yeah, even regular season games. are Because hockey is not a sport where you can, like, take lightly, you know. <laughs> like, if you take lightly, you're probably just going to get your ass kicked and drilled. Yeah. Yeah, those guys are not bar sports. You can watch. Huh? I think hockey is like probably, arguably, like one of the top two sports to watch. Like when you're at a bar, like and drinking with like people. Yeah, football one, hockey two, basketball three. Yeah, I would say college basketball tournament basketball might. It's a close second. Yeah, Yeah. less four probably UFC five. Baseball's probably at eight. Nasty. Get that shit out of here. Baseball is is right above – no, I'd say, yeah, baseball is right above golf. You guys are funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's only – yeah, Really anything – like, it's so non-action based. Like, you cannot put baseball anywhere near that. I was only talking about, like, the playoffs, too. Yeah, like, I go to a bar here. I'm like, oh, baseball's on. You guys got sex in the city? I'd rather watch that. I mean, like, I'd rather watch, like – any, I mean, soccer, like World Cup only, like not MLS. I don't watch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Soccer would be pushing it, but like UFC fights. Oh, like the USA in the World Cup, that's definitely better than baseball. Yes. Oh. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Because it's that is like little action too at times. But I mean, college basketball, I agree. During March Madness, it probably is the number one thing to watch if you're at a bar. There's nothing like March Madness. But, yeah, that's and there's just and the best part is there's just there's just an abundance of games like that with those Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's just like there's so many fucking games. It's so dope if they went like uh, best of three. So it was so many games for like an absurd amount of days. Dude, that'd be nuts. Best of threes. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Um, 
But that wraps it up. Anything else you guys either you want to talk about? I don't think so. Uh, oh, actually, I did see. So apparently they let Lamar Jackson pick the soundtrack to Madden 21. Like, that might be worth buying the game alone. That's the game. Oh, yeah, I did see the soundtrack. Uh, he fucking blows, but he can listen to it. Yeah. yeah at least I would never people. buy it, but it has a very dope playlist. Oh, it'll definitely be fire if he gets to pick it out then. It's but. already out. It's like, like – Yeah, they posted it. This is insane, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a sick list. Damn. All right. I'll have to check that out. But, all right, appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll be back next week with an interview. Peace. Peace.